Confronted with the end, some might wonder, what is Kobe Bryant's greatest impact? Is it the indelible mark he's left on two decades worth of NBA peers? Or perhaps, is it the inspiration imparted on his bravest, most fragile fans? What's up? How's it going? For the past 20 years, Bryant has devoted himself to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which helps children with life-threatening illnesses. To date, he has helped more than 100 kids from all over the country. I love your haircut. Thank you. I love it. If I could grow hair again, I'd do that. I know. But I put your name in the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball is something that'll come and it'll eventually go. The beauty in that is trying to use that time to inspire others, to provide some sort of escape for them. I think that's something that lives well beyond you know, the game of basketball, and it's probably most important. <laughs> Kirk Keller had his wish come true in 2011. This season, he's been invited back to Staples Center to watch another game and to relive the moment that changed his life. Darius, you have your phone? Let's take a picture. Five years ago today, I got my wish granted by Make-A-Wish to come and meet Kobe Bryant. I was suffering from cancer, osteocoma on my left leg. That's my son's biggest hero in life. He walked in and you just would not believe the feeling. It was just like this presence of just awesomeness. And he is the most wonderful person. He's very loving and caring. Very welcoming, hugging, everything. And he just was talking to me like I was a normal person. Kobe's last words were to him, whatever you want to do, Kurt, do it. He's in five-year remission right now. I'm in school, I'm working full-time, doing what doctors said I couldn't do, living the life now. Like Kurt, Crystal Coles was also diagnosed with cancer when she was just 15 years old. A lifelong Lakers fan, her wish was granted in 2003 when she met Kobe following a game in Los Angeles. It was just my family and him, and it was just so awesome. I mean, he sat there for an hour and a half with us. He talked about everything that was going on in my life. He even asked me about school. He let me give him a kiss on the cheek, and he gave me his hat. When I was battling cancer, I had this poster up in my room, and it was him with his number one. And to me, I kind of felt like that bond with him because he was young coming into the league, and it always helped me in that fight for cancer, and he just kind of inspired me that way. Armed with that inspiration, Crystal beat her cancer and is now moving on with her life. She got married and is starting a family of her own. Now, more than 12 years after that first meeting, Crystal has a message of gratitude for Kobe. I'm so grateful that you took the time out for me and I just want to tell you thank you for taking that time and that it meant so much to me and my family. As years pass, that sentiment grows among the kids that come through this locker room. For Jeffrey McKenzie, his meeting with Kobe took place when he was just eight years old, though the memories haven't faded. I was in fifth grade, it was January 24th, 2004, and my mom started working for Make-A-Wish, so I had sickle cell, so she asked me if I wanted to make a wish, and I said, yes, of course. And the one wish that I only had in the whole world was to meet Kobe Bryant. We got a call and said, Kobe wants to meet you, and Jeffrey was just so excited. I was just antsy, anticipating him to walk through those doors, and when he finally came through, I hid behind my mom, and I just screamed because I couldn't believe, like, he was actually walking towards me, you know? And Jeffrey just grabbed him and just gave him the biggest hug. It was, it was incredible. I just couldn't let go. I, I wouldn't let go. I just didn't want to. I just remember as a mom how much it touched me to see Kobe reach back down and embrace Jeffrey because he had gone through so much. It molded him into more of a hero figure instead of just an icon. As fate would have it, Jeffrey crosses paths with that icon one more time as he heads out of the Lakers locker room. Eight, and here's Kobe Bryant again. Hey, Jeffrey, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> How you doing, man? Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Eight, huh? Man, yeah. please. I, and we had, we had dinner together. How you not remember Eight me, man? Eight years old, man. God, that's, that's How you not remember me, Kobe? Here's my man. It's surreal. I, I, it's, it's hard to believe, but for now, I'm just still in the moment. I don't even know what to say. Eight to a grown man. We've been friends. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. You're the best. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of my family, on behalf of Make-A-Wish, thank you so much. 